And what's happening, my lovely cat Mojo Tears? It is your cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy here. We're gonna answer a question today that gets asked all the time. Luckily for us, Jules has stepped up to the plate with her cat Enzo to ask me this question. And let's just face it, this is the kind of thing starts out cute, ends with carnage. Jules, take it away. Hi Jackson, so I just had a quick question. This is Enzo. He is one year old and he is like the most playful cat ever. Cause I wondered if it's okay to play fight with them. He doesn't show the signs of aggression, like his ears going back, his eyes getting big or him trying to make himself bigger or smaller. We play fight. I try to avoid like touching his stomach area just so that he knows that it's playing. But I just wondered if it's normal to play fight with them um, or if that's like bad. I don't know if that's gonna show aggression or cause any issues in the future between me and him. So I just wondered what you think. Let me know. Thank you. told you, I told you it was one of those good ones, right? I'm glad that Jules, you, you just put it out all on the table there. Uh, this is what I do. Jackson, are you sure this is okay? Uh, knowing full well that I might say, no, that's not okay, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out now. No, let me let me let me back up for a second. It's it's clear that you've got one cute kitten right in Enzo, but there was another uh, little picture of him where he's growing up just a little bit. So we have very cute kitten Enzo and growing up teenager Enzo. And what happens next? Big bruiser Enzo. And then we got problems, okay? Because you started off with a precedent that could be really cute right now, but like I said, could end in carnage. <laughs> well, not necessarily carnage. Leave it to me to be hyperbolic about just about everything. But really, uh, this is about roughhousing or rough play or hand rough housing, but it's really about the concept of a hand as a toy. And there is very few incidences where this winds up to be a good happy thing. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of you guys out there who are like, wait a second, Jackson, I can play with my cat's tummy for six hours and he just sits there with a big smile on his face. Good, that's great, I'm, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> for you. I would love to see it, by the way, but happy for you. But in Jules' case, you can see where it's heading. Now, if you take a look at this piece of the footage right here where uh, you see Enzo sort of rearing back and then coming in, he's meowing, he's doing that little, oh, gotta get a little bunny kick on. These are things that he would have picked up from his siblings mostly, or even his mom, where he starts to get into the, okay, what is play when I'm a cat? All right, let me try this. Okay, that works, let me try this. Now let me try this. And then his brother or his sister at that moment would be like, whoa, that hurt. Ha bang. And you know, then Enzo learns. Or if he's being like hyper heavy duty, exploring Dennis the Menace Enzo, he'll try it again. At which point his sister, his brother or his mom would be like, I told you that really hurts. Bang. At that point, he should learn his lesson. This is what Learning is all about, I mean, think about it. You know, if you were a kid like me, you see that like electric socket and you go, I wonder what happens if I Ow. But if you're like me, you go back three times before you make sure that that thing is making that really bad feeling. Okay, I was slow. But here's hoping that Enzo would learn really fast what is appropriate, where to inhibit. Should I put my claws out or not? Should I bite this hard or not? But the problem is, Jules, that doesn't happen with this. There is no way when you are using your arm as a substitute for a playmate that he can really gauge uh, how good or bad it is until probably you're bleeding. But even as a kitten, it usually doesn't get that bad. It still sort of verges on the cute, right? But I want you to think about it for a second, especially when he's doing that bunny kick right there. That's kind of a big deal. I mean, if you think about how a cat acts and reacts in the wild, if a predator is coming their way, they'll roll over kind of, they'll be like, oh, don't, and their ears will go back. But when that fight comes, when they know that there's a fight coming, those back legs 
legs are their strongest weapon. Not these front claws, not these teeth, well, not these teeth, but not the fangy teeth. Those things hurt. And those things can, of course, do damage. But when we're talking eviscerating your opponent, that's where the back legs come in. So with Enzo doing his best bunny kick on you, let me tell you something. When Enzo is one year old, two years old, what's that going to feel like? That's going to feel like a shredded arm. And then I'm afraid, Jules, at that point, maybe not you, but a lot of you guys out there might do this as well, where you just start seeing red, you know, where, where you just like that hurts so bad. Why are you doing this to me? Well, I'm doing this to you because we've always done this. This is what we do. We have fun and you do this with your hands and I go, yay, and I do everything that I know how to do in my sort of pray slash play vocabulary. And that leads us to the conclusion, Jules, hands are not toys. And it's one of those things that we just don't want to be teaching kittens especially because uh, they get older. They then get into contact with children, with other humans who might be a little scared of them, and they're looking for fun in all the wrong places. So let's look for fun in the right places, shall we? Okay, what are we going to do about this? Well, number one, uh, we're going to find appropriate victims because this is not an appropriate victim. Take it from a guy who's bled too much. This is not a victim. What is an appropriate victim? Well, let's start with toy number one. Toy number one would be the kicker. There you go. You got a bunny kicker cat? Well, here's a kicker for you. And uh, the kicker is just, usually it comes in uh, a, a singular variety, which is just a long stuffed thing that they can then grab onto from chin down to knees and really just bite it and wrap their arms around it and then get that bunny kick going. And that's an appropriate victim. If he's getting all wound up, hand him a kicker, off he goes. Now, a lot of kickers are uh, stuffed with catnip. There are some that I like that are, are not catnippy, but then you can marinate them if you want because you never know exactly how your cat is going to respond to catnip. I mean, sometimes, and I'm not saying Enzo is, but sometimes they can be mean drunks. You know, it would be a nice thing to avoid them getting even more aggressive when they're on the catnip. Now, the second toy would be the one that you hear me talk about all the time, interactive play. If you really want to play with your cat, if you really want to see him go to town on something, then you break out interactive toy. That is the wand with a feather or some other attachment on the end of it. And it's great because it's hand here, toy over here, and cat all over the place trying to catch the toy. So whether it's down on the ground, you know, wherever it is, whether you got them jumping around, a great way to just, just exhaust Enzo is with that kind of play because the other great thing about that is you are still doing that real sort of bonding interaction that I think you're used to and you love with him and clearly he loves it as well. But this way, you're not gonna get beat up. He's going to get that satisfaction of having Hunt caught and killed something, right? Because he gets that feather in his mouth and he runs away with it or whatever. Um, and so that's number two. Number three, the other category is what I call remote toys. Remote toys are, they're based Basically, little squeaky mice, little, you know, something that you hold up, you could be in your pocket, those little fuzzy things, right? That is something that if he's looking like, man, I got it, oh, that arm is looking good, out of your pocket comes a little fuzzy mouse and poo -poo, there goes Enzo, right? He just gets redirected onto something appropriate as he's coming for the fingers and the wrists and all the stuff that the wrist bones connected to, the elbow bone, the elbow connected to, the Finger bone, nope, that's wrong. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> so we've got three types of toys. You can even have a laser pointer in your pocket if he's into that kind of thing and let him get his hunter on. But then just don't forget when you're dealing with lasers, you always wanna to transition to something like a kicker or an interactive toy so he can finally get that sort of kill part out of the hunting and that'll really satisfy him all the way around. So that's just a great place to start, Jules. And if you need me to say it again, hands are not toys. Brought to you by the fine folks at Jackson Galaxy Enterprises. And again, thanks so much, Jules, for sending that question in. A lot of people are going to benefit from the answer. And once again, all love to Enzo. You know, and Enzo, I'm sorry if we flash forward about two years from now and you're like, wait a second. I I knew I had this game. Why aren't you letting me play this game? Well, Jackson, I'm going to kill that Jackson. I swear to God, he's going to get a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> Cat Daddy loves you, Enzo. Anyway, thank you so much, Jules. And today's Cat Mojo Rockstar of the Week is Oreo. 
Oreo and his human Alice. Now, you might see this and you go, well, this isn't very rock starish, but it is. Bear with me. It just looks right now like Oreo's just walking over a keyboard. But no, folks. See, if you look at the screen, that's uh, Oreo doing a little sploot. And I think Alice was saying, well, I just need to send this sploot to Jackson Galaxy. And Oreo's are like, not so fast, Mom. Not so fast. Sploots are private. They're between you and me. You're supposed to ask me before you send pictures along. And in this case, no, Mom, no. It's not okay. This is not okay. Sploot is private. I mean, it's cool. Your cat is, is an editor, a critic, and a cat all rolled into one. And speaking of editors and critics and cats, if your cat is a rock star, you want to just send it right about here to this link, along with if you've got any questions for me whatsoever, just make sure to, you know, say your name and say what you're doing. If this is a rock star. This is a question. And then show me what you got to show me. And maybe you'll wind up in a video as lovely as this one. And speaking of lovely, if you'd like to get more lovely videos like this, then just make sure to hit the subscribe and make sure that bell is hit because otherwise you'll never know uh, when something like this pops up. And of course you want to know, right? Everyone wants to know. Enzo wants to know. That's right. I want to know. I want to know where you are because... <laughs> All right, you guys, before things get entirely too silly, all light and all love, and all mojo to ya. Arrgh.